Hello, my name is Animesh Shah and I'm a software development engineer here at AWS. Today, we are excited to introduce a new feature in Amazon CloudWatch Network Monitoring, where you can now monitor network performance of traffic flowing between AWS regions across the AWS global network. Flow monitors now help you to assess whether network performance issues on the AWS global network between a local and a remote region are impacting your workloads. The Flow Monitor's network health indicator now also captures the health of the AWS global network on your workload's network paths between regions. This means you can quickly identify whether impairments are affecting your workloads in a local region, in the AWS global network, or in the remote region. This feature extends network visibility for flows, now allowing you to monitor flows going to a public IP address in a remote region, and flows going to a private IP address in a remote region over Amazon VPC peering or AWS Transit Gateway peering. Next, let's see this feature in action. Here, I'm logged into the AWS account and have navigated to the Network Flow Monitor console in EU West 1 region under CloudWatch. For the purpose of this demo, I have already initialized Network Flow Monitor and installed agents on EC2 instances that are collecting performance metrics for flows going to different regions over the AWS global network. There is a new between regions category under the workload insights tab, which provides various aggregated performance metrics for traffic going to different regions. Similarly, if you have S3 DynamoDB traffic that is traversing the AWS global network, we now provide the region name towards which your AWS services traffic is directed. To gain deeper insights about the health and performance of a particular workload or a set of workloads going over the AWS global network, you can select those workloads and create a monitor. You can make further edits to configure the monitor based on your needs. Here, suppose I'm interested in monitoring the flows originating from these two subnets and going over the AWS global network to US East 1 region. I will select both of these to create a flow monitor with that configuration. I can further access the full monitor creation workflow by clicking on the edit button here or through the monitors tab. A few minutes after creation, we will start seeing outputs for this monitor. These metrics include the network health and performance of the AWS global network between EU West 1 and US East 1 regions. We can see here that the network health was in degraded state for this duration indicating that the workload monitor by this flow monitor was impacted by AWS network issues within the EU West 1 region or on the AWS global network between EU West 1 and US East 1 regions. To gain insights into which specific top flows were affected by retransmissions and retransmission timeouts, we can navigate to the Historical Explorer tab. For each flow, it gives details like the category the flow belongs to, details about the origin of the flow, and for flows going over the AWS global network, the remote region name. We can also see a visualization of the network path that was taken by this flow. In this case, the flow is directed towards US East 1 region over a VPC peering connection. If you are interested in monitoring the performance and health in the reverse direction, that is the network in the remote region, in this case, US East 1, and that of the AWS global network from remote to local region, you can set up network flow monitor in the re remote region and create relevant flow monitors there. If such a setup exists, a link will appear in the path visualization to the monitors page in the remote region, so the network health of both regions can be viewed side by side. Consider this example. Suppose an enterprise company is using AWS and to replicate their data stores, they are using a multi-region architecture. They have subnets in different VPCs across regions connected by VPC peering and transit gateway peering. They have EC2 instances in these subnets communicating with AWS services like S3 and DynamoDB and with each other across regions. They have initialized network flow monitor and have agents installed on these EC2 instances collecting performance metrics and flow monitors set up to monitor traffic originating from various subnets and going over the AWS global network to different regions. 
Now, suppose their team noticed failures in their workloads. Using their unified dashboard, the team identifies that there is an AWS network issue impacting their workload between region A and region B by finding that the network health indicator is equal to 1 for a particular flow monitor in region A and for the corresponding monitor set up to monitor the reverse direction in region B. To further understand the impact on their users and the blast radius, they come to the network flow monitor console. They access the identified monitor in region A and are able to navigate to the corresponding monitor in region B through the provided link. Here, among other metrics, they can find specific flows that were impacted by retransmissions and retransmission timeouts and what categories they belong to. Based on the monitor configuration and impacted flows, they are able to tell that only their workload going over transit gateway peering is impacted but the workload going over VPC peering is fine. They are able to pinpoint the part of their network where network paths have been impacted. After understanding the impact, the team executes a failover mitigation strategy. To summarize, the benefits of this feature include gaining visibility into the AWS global network health, faster problem identification of network issues impacting your multi-region workloads, clearer distinction between application and network issues for your multi-region workloads, and improved multi-region decision-making. Visit the AWS documentation to learn more and start leveraging the capabilities of this feature today. Thanks for watching.